Hi, my name is Sean Graves and I am a producer of Post Omniz as well as my own music project or my own music as well under Sean Graves. And this here is a video about the Buchla Modular Easel that I had done a concert of. So I wanted to deep dive and do like a very specific video about each piece and hopefully this inspires you to get into modular your rock. It was scary for me to get into and I thought I would never be where I am today with my synthesis. So um, if this helps, awesome. And if you need more information, please let me know and check out the links down below as well as the materials that I use, what modules I've used and all the videos that inspired me to get to where I am today as well. Um, one thing I want to address is that when it comes to Euro Rock, be very, very attentive about what you're getting. Get very attentive and knowledgeable about what each module does. And I explain what each module does to some extent to the Buchla module easel that I've created. And uh, another thing is that it is, it is a wallet burner. So this was a project that was a longevity project. It was not one that I did in, you know, a couple of months here or there. I mean, there was a bit of a, you know, a growth period of what modules I had acquired, as well as ones I had to let go because there were better ones out there. And, you know, technology is always growing and people are, or manufacturers are always coming out with new pieces. So without much further ado, here is the Buchla Modular Easel tutorial. Peace. I would like to call a Buchla modular easel. It's all your rack. All these pieces here culminate to all those sounds that you just had heard that can be effectively produced by a Buchla easel if one had one. But if one does not, then as an experiment, as a thought experiment, this right here is my take on the Buchla modular easel as the parts are here. So let's check out the process. So here is the Buchla modular easel Eurorack monster thing that I've created over the past six months here. And today I just wanna go step by step and talk about what each piece of this modular does and why I was inspired by not only another fellow YouTuber, but also wanted to create something along the way that was true to the Buchla modular easel uh, without it compromising possibly not being there. But I mean, there's some parts here that we're gonna, I'm gonna address that will help you understand that there is no real way of getting to a Buchla easel without failing in the first place. So without much further ado, this is my take on how to best get to a Buchla mod uh, easel uh, modular wise without breaking the bank. And honestly, like as far as when purchases were made, the highest, all these, you know, pieces here were under $150 at least, like specifically each module here was at least under 150, if not trying to get under a hundred dollars US. The first major purchase you're ever gonna have to deal with is going to be the case. I went through a couple as it was in the process of creating this thing because of depth. So this definitely has a whole lot of depth to it, which is what's really, really needed for Eurorack. Some some people, some manufacturers, they, they kind of skimp out on how much you actually have. So 
that was one thing that I didn't realize was going to be a key issue until it became an issue and I went, huh. So without much further ado, let's get into each of these module pieces and why I picked them out and what their features are as far as how I use them to create tones. So first and foremost here is the Trion in 1960 Utility Micro Sequencer. This thing here, it's pretty darn cool. It Essentially what it uses is it sends a signal that tells the rest of the machine, hey, go to a pitch. Um, there's not really like a, a note value to these. There are other, you know, pieces of machines out there that can help an artist get there, you know, cr uh, chromatically. But for sake of trying to be Buchla, Buchla Euro Rocks, or I'm sorry, Buchla Easels don't come with like a, hey, here's a note. You just kind of have to feel your way through the sound and, and it has sliders, whereas this here is going to be twist knob and figuring it out as we go. So we've already failed at this point here with trying to create a Buchla easel because this is a four step sequencer as opposed to a five step sequencer. So I'm missing a fifth step somewhere along the lines here, but with a little bit of ingenuity and tricks from using the clock and the random voltage generator here, we can create a fifth step or a, a lack of a fifth step there or a trip to a fifth step that otherwise wouldn't be there by just syncopating it through. So this is a really cool module. This is actually the most expensive out of all of them throughout, but this here was the most expensive module, but it's a definite bang for the buck. I have seen in my passing uh, you know, going through Google and things like that, a five step, a three step, a four step sequencer, where you have just, you know, three, four, five. But, you know, the HP, it's a little bit daunting to try to like, think like, well, I've only got 84 HP here. And given what, you know, I'm, I'm allowed per this box here, it, I don't want to jeopardize, you know, a lot of things have been having to be like compromised for space and also trying to aim for that Buchla sound. So as far as, you know, it comes, this here was pretty much the only way I was going to be able to get to a Buchla sound without compromising. So, or at least compromising to an extent. And it comes with really great uh, assets to it, such as direction, transparent, and transpose and reset. And uh, typical sequencers just come with a clock in, gate out, and a CV output. So it's very simple to manipulate as well as patch through. The next one is the Dolpifer Alpha 118 TAC 2 noise and random sample and hold. So in my prior I have a video, I'll link down below, a concert where this actually was a lot bigger and it did not come with a sample and hold. When I found out that the TAC-2 was released and it came with a sample and hold, I had to get my hands on this thing and I had to trade it in, the old one in for a new one because it comes with the sample and hold feature here, which I think is really, really helpful, especially for what we're trying to create here as far as steps or manipulating the rhythms that we need to create here. At the heart and soul of it is two sounds which you know are going to be white noise or colored noise and so those are controlled by these two knobs up here but also at the same time these four knobs here create a, a sense of randomness by controlling the sensitivity of the red light here and then using the blue to manipulate when the negative charge is sent, the rate at which it's being produced, as well as the level of which it's being hit. So all four of these clock the random, which only has one out, and then it has a clock in as well as a, uh, which is your sample and hold. And then it goes to trigger and hold as well. So you have your in for that and your out. 
and then you have your color and white noise out as well. So it does create sound, which is not what these settings are going to be doing as far as what this can do, because these are just going to create, we'll get to here, but these are going to create tones, whereas these are just going to create static, essentially, and then like a variance of like what kind of static we're hearing. So that's the random noise generator. And now moving on to shaping and creating the architecture of the tone, here is the Ataxia Dual Modular uh, ADSR by Dreadbox. And this thing here is just amazing. Two attenuators down here. So you have essentially two ADSRs running. And when you can access by hitting two or having one, you have a modifier as well as a low frequency oscillator. And you can go from exponential by clicking both or going back to just how the machine is just reading the lines here. And so what I really like about this module is the, the glides here, the slides. This is very Buchla-like in Buchla land. And then on the top here is your inputs for trigger for both one and two, one and two. And then you've got your time and your level. You can manipulate the architecture of the sound there as well. So this is a real bang for the buck. I love the color. It's just, it pops out of all this chromatic sound, you know, pieces here, the grays and the blacks and, and all that stuff. So seeing a nice pink piece here, I wish people in Eurorack land just got a little bit more, you know, courage to just put a nice colored plate in. I mean, who cares what it looks like? I just love the color of it. So uh, moving on is Clock by 2HP. In fact, a lot of these are gonna be, there's gonna be a whole run of 2HP and Synthrotech throughout this whole piece here. And so 2HP here has the clock. It's very simple. I don't need a whole lot, but there's a way to generate what how fast and how slow your clock is running. And so that's what this little dial here helps manipulate, as well as, you know, what kind of timing we're wanting. Do we want just free range time or do we want like a actual on the pulse clock? Also, it comes with a pause which the Buchla now, the easel does come with a pause button for the clock, for the pulsar sound uh, or piece there. And also we can hijack into that as well, at least modular wise. So this from here to here is how we're creating the burst of sound that you've heard at the beginning of this video. Next is a combination of both 2HP and Synthrotech. They both have uh, multis. I first purchased this one because I just needed a multi and I didn't realize actually there's a lot of things that I need multis for. So one, two, three, four, who knew, right? And it's one is going to be when you, the heart and soul of a multi is that you put in an input and then it, manipul it multiplies it three times or, you know, for three exports. And that's at least for the 2 HP. For the Synthrotech, they went above and beyond the Call of Duty here. And if you put in an input, it multiplies all the way down until you put an input here, at which point then you've only got this amount, like a normal multi, and this amount, like a normal multi. So multis here, the whole purpose behind this is that if you notice at the bottom of a of a Buchla easel, there's a lot of inputs and outputs. And so having to figure out, oh, what what is that manipulati manipulation thereof? Well, multis, that's the whole point behind them. So that is the heart and soul of how I can explode without having to double tap into or stack cables on top of cables. That is how this here is used. Next is the heart and sound of the whole machine here and the soul of it. And that's these two VCOs, the 259 VCOs. And these here, um, they 
use high frequency and low frequency range uh, tones. And each one has both sine, triangle, saw, and square waves. And the, the purpose behind this is that you've got one that's gonna be a modulator and then another one that's gonna be the actual sound generator or the complex oscillator. And both of these are heart and soul based on Buchla. And so there's, there's at least that little connection to Buchla that we've got going as far as the actual sound architecture, but it doesn't just go that far. We have to do a little bit more work to get there. So we'll, we've put that to the side, to the right side of the oscillator, specifically when it comes to this section here. But, you know, there's a thing here when it comes to the modulating oscillator, there's like a little switch here in Buchla land that goes from AM to Balex to FM. So we have to address this. What are we doing? Well, what we're trying to essentially do here is when it comes to amplitude modulation, change the amplitude and modulate that. Whereas for Balex, it's ring modulation. And thankfully we've got that and I'll address that later. And then we've got frequency modulation just sending a sound or a tone from here into the FM in, and then just by twisting this dial here, we have frequency modulating this whole machine here. So you'll have to have this in order to co complete this, as well as use this to create the rest of the tones. So um, that's that's what this whole bank is for. You can also use this to blend and, and crunch uh, other sound waves into one another if it's not for specifically Buchla reasons. And that's a kind of a form of F or I'm sorry, West, End, West Coast synthesis there. So uh, in order to get to now uh, addressing that little switch there, which was, you know, so like, Ah, oh, what what is that? What how do I break that down? There was only like a couple parts there that I was like, oh whoa, how do I address that? And one was the pulsar, because I didn't understand what a pulsar was, and I realized, oh, it's a clock. And now I had to address what is AM modulation? What is what is amplitude modulation? How does one achieve this? Because frequency modulation is a given, and ring modulation is a given, but how does one do amplitude modulation? And it's quite simple actually. Um one is to send the signal into the in, have the sound from your modulating oscillator into the CV, take that out, put it back into the top CV here, or VCA in, have the ADSR, which is multied, control that control voltage, and then outsource that into a wave folder. Now, I know that sounds like a lot, I'll explain it as I patch it because what's effectively going on is, yeah, we're taking this tone and we are control volting it like as it needs to be so we can achieve that pluck, that high ring, almost ring pluckiness that is so bukla -ly. And I don't know if that makes any sense, bukla -ly, but it's a, it, it is what it is. And so that, by using a 2HP VCA, we're able to manipulate a, a AM modulation there. We have an FM modulation. Now we're going into the Synthrotech Fold module. And the heart and soul of this is, so when it comes to the oscillator, the sine wave is being pinched and being folded into one another. And that is what this is gonna be doing because it doesn't do that naturally here. So we have to do it elsewhere. And that's where the fold comes in. So we could change the level of the fold, the offset of the fold, and of course the mix of it being what it is to what we're trying to get it to, as well as how many times we tap into those folds. So we could send the signal into the wave folder, or we can send it into the ring modulator, we can send it to the wave folder, back into the ring modulator, and then out too as well. And so that is what this particular piece does. And it's it's really fun. It, it, it really does help shape the sound that we're trying to achieve here. And that's what the whole purpose is, is trying to achieve that sound by using Eurorack to get there. 
Last but not least is also the mix-up. And this, this mix-up by IntelliGel is super cool. We've got four inputs, uh, two of which I just typically use, unless if I need to get into like a, a, a white noise or a color noise that I want to send in and get like a nice little percussive psh sound. I don't know how to explain it, but it's like a percussive snare sound, if you will. And the point is, is to be able to blend the sine wave that we've created this monster sound through into input one, which is going to always be the first thing you hear. But then sound two, this, this second voice, is going to be one of these or one of these that you're going to be hearing and then hearing it just ever so slightly be mixed together into a sound that is then outputted into the low pass gates by Synthrotech as well. Now, in the beginning, I had definitely had a low pass gate by Dolpifer, but it was only a single low pass gate. It was not a double low pass gate. So trying to manipulate two running sounds together that are actually kind of crunching together. Instead, actually, I have a way of getting two sounds into here and manipulating the sensitivity or the frequency of not the frequency, the the shininess and the dullness. This is pretty much like the filter side of the the Buchla, if that was so the case. Buchla doesn't filter. Not that that's what is trying to happen here. What I'm trying to say here is that like we can change the the value of how the tone is heard, whether it's bright or dark, shiny or dull. And so that's the purpose of the low pass gate. It has the purpose of a volta uh, voltage control amplitude, much like this over here, but it doesn't, it, it, it kind of gives like a different, uh, instead of just giving a face value here, it kind of gives a more, again, tonality to it. I don't know how to explain it, but there's, you know, these levels here that can turn on how bright, how dark, um, you can also offset which one is being low pass gated or being used as a VCA. And then last but not least, the Buchla easel has a spring reverb here, which, you know, you can't like not have. So, you know, I just crank the levels all the way up and then, you know, use the mix here to, you know, emulate this nice lush tone that you hear. And of course it runs the signal runs through the spring and then out to the sound box so those are all the pieces of this euro rack here and all the pieces that i have come to find through my travels as well as you know what i've been able to achieve with this particular machine so now i'm going to show you guys some patches in Buchla land, it's pretty important to use your inputs and outputs and use them with colors and purpose. And you cannot make this machine talk without using patch cables. And so these here are just single input patch cables. And it's I got like a whole mod podge of different things and I use different colors for different reasons. And then I go off the bandwagon and just, you know, fit where I can as I do my patching. But for this purpose here, we're gonna just create one tone and then I'm gonna show you how to use FM, Balex, and AM modulation on the same tone. But most importantly, when it comes to Eurorack, have a purpose. Make sure your machine has a purpose before you even attempt to create one. And go ahead and look into other, you know, major companies and look at what their setup is and then think about what their pieces are and how they use them you know even this machine here i've used this triana sequencer here to be used on other semi-module machines here because it just 
it's a beaut and same with the reverb here on the side because it's just class, right? So here we go. We're going to use purple for the oscillators. It's the shortest cables that I've got and there's no reason once I put them in to use them otherwise. So we're going to just go ahead and do the Buchla thing that we do and that's to take a sine wave and put it into the wavefold and then take the wavefold out and put it, ooh, it just came right out. What in the world? And then put it right into the mixer. And as you can tell, the sound here, it's, it's on, it's on for days. And I have these just kind of going, but nothing's coming out yet. I don't have, here we go. Let's see if I can get some, some sound going. Right? So there we go. That is essentially what we're doing, but there's nothing musical about this, correct? So how do we get to a musical, a musical piece here? Actually, I'll just bring down a low pass gate. That'll stop it from doing things. And that will be more so on this side, but we still need to blend and get these tones to be talking to one another and create that bucle sound. So let's just pick a random sound. Let's do a uh, saw wave and put that into the second tone and we'll hear what that sounds like. Right? So again, we can blend this together. The point here is that I'm actually going to turn on that FM because we'll get there. But the point is, is that we're able to blend these tones together and then um, we're able to create something called a tone. And meanwhile, yeah, we are wave folding this sound. Uh, I think it was about five times. That's how much I think I felt there on that movement. So now we got to get to a place where we are manipulating this sound. So for all tents and purposes, we will always be using this out and we'll be putting it into the multi. And what we got to do is get this timer over to another multi since we are going to be using it to move an electrical signal. Wow, my essential tremors are really kicking in today. So first and foremost, we're going to take the clock, put it into a multi and give it three steps or three outs. We put the trigger for the uh, ataxia into another multi here. And then we're going to take the out of this clock. We'll move it into, we can actually put it here in the ataxia for a moment. So now every time this hits, it's telling the ataxia to go, right? And you can tell by the light that's down here that it's going at the same rate as the clock, which is cool. But in order to hear it, we need to take the output of the ataxia and let's put it into the low pass gates over here. In fact, you can almost start to hear it now little bit. Bring the other one in over here. Oh, actually, you need to be brought up to the top. Boom. So now, So you can kind of hear that little uh, 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 that's happening. That's what's happening right here. That's essentially what is causing, oh, actually, hold on. I put it in the reset. 
Here we go. That is what's causing now this shape, this immediate attack. The more I bring that, the more I bring the decay up, the longer it takes for this sound to finally come to completion. But already we're kind of getting this boucle sound and we have only used about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine pieces. Well, counting the outs, 10 different modules. But it's still not, we're still not quite there yet. So let's think about other ways that we can create this boucle sound, right? Now, first and foremost, we're gonna move this time out and put it into clock over on Triana. And so now we're done. We're done with the clock. It's going out, it's coming in. We can outsource it to other places if we so choose, but we're gonna also take the random voltage generator and we're gonna put it into another multi down here. And so now I've multiplied this one single out into three times and it also has its own clock going for itself. Do you see that? Gift of sight. And we are going to bring it over to, well, actually, you know what? We'll, we'll hang up, I'll leave this on the side here because I want you guys to understand the point behind this movement here. But we still gotta get this, gotta get this into here, correct? So thankfully, we'll just use a gate out to the trigger in. And now we've got that signal back again because we've sent the clock over to hit these notes. And now it's going into ataxia, which is now sending it out to here. So we should be thankfully hearing thing and that's send a CV into the oscillator and as I turn this dial just ever so slightly changes the note value. Now about this thing, right? Instead of it just consistently falling, we can trip it to make it into a fifth step. What's effectively happening is that yes, we have these four steps and yes, it is consistently wanting to be triggered and the clock wants it to fall down and the random voltage generator is gonna pop in and go, no, move back up a step. So there's where our fifth step is. However, we can take this a step further and we can take that random voltage and now we can put it into the clock and now Every time that random voltage is being used, it's causing it, the clock here, the pulsar, the pulsar, to pause. And now we've not only got a step going up, but we've also got a pause that we can manipulate the sequence. That right there 
is like a really, it's a really, really basic way of creating a bukla sound. But let's take it to the next step. And let's now talk about that modulation side. So for one, FM modulation, we can use high pass or low pass. It doesn't matter which, you, because the bukla uses both at the same time. And if you think about the multis here, it's already becoming a very, very tight patch here for this section, but it's it's all in good fun because we can use so much more to get into the the weedly weeds of, of Euro Rock. And I guess that's where, you know, uh, uh, wires that you could tap into would be really, really nice. But for this effect, we're just going to pick a random one. Let's go for square. Okay. So I'm going to send a square wave into the FM in here for this oscillator. So this oscillator is now manipulating this oscillator. And that could be by the tone here. And so we've already got a sound, a couple of sounds coming out from here. So now let's manipulate this sound with another sound. When I start turning this, you're going to start hearing FM modulation. There it is. Now as I change the tone, Take it one step further and let's hit low pass. again. So that right there is FM modulation and, oh, getting some feedback there. So um, what's what's essentially happening is this waveform here, this square waveform is blending, it's, it's blending itself, not like, I guess like not necessarily blending itself, but it is disrupting and modulating the rest of these tones here that are coming out and that we're mixing together here effectively to this tonality. So now let's get into AM modulation or actually the easiest one is gonna be probably ring modulation. So we're gonna unplug the sine wave or the square wave from here. We're gonna move the sine wave over to ring mod. And of course that out needs to be moved over as well. So this is what ring modulation is gonna sound like. Once I turn on the volume and bring up the LPG.
So right there, we've already got this new form of sound that's being used in this, this additive synthesis here. So now we're gonna jump into AM modulation and I'm gonna to explain to you what I'm doing and how it's gonna be fed into one another and why it's happening the way that it's happening. So here we go. We're gonna take the sine wave. We're gonna put it into the in. Boom, like that, right? And then we're gonna take a, uh, a sound from here. So like, just like how we use FM modulation, like a square wave for FM, let's use a triangle wave for the, for the CVN. So you can see from the gift of sight here, this, this, is, this VCA right here, VCA2 is on. It's getting a signal. We're gonna hit that CV, light goes off, that's fine, no, no problems. And then we're gonna take the out from one and I'm gonna put it into the wave folder because we still need to do this for sake of Buchla, you know, reasons. And now I'm gonna grab a whole different color, but I'm gonna understand what it's gonna be used for. Taking the out of this C, uh, VCA2 and put it into VCA1. And then we're gonna take a, uh, a uh, gate out from the ataxia and we're gonna put it into the VCA. Oh, it's a tight, tight, tight push. So now we should be able to have uh, effectively AM modulation. All I'm doing is just changing the value of the tone, and that's changing the amplitude. And there you go. So what have we covered? We've covered how to build not only a Buchla module easel with Eurorack here, we've also talked about each piece of this beautiful machine here, as well as paid homage to those sounds, as well as showing how to patch what we're doing, why we're doing it, and, and all those things. So yeah, I mean, it's it's really fun to get lost in this because, I mean, there's just so much we can do. We can get into fast rhythms. We can get into slow drone rhythms. We can do so much with this beautiful easel here. So um, not to possibly tell everybody, go get one or go do what I did, but because it is a money burner and yet it was so much fun to do. It was such a cool thought experiment. And this is truly a box of sounds that I would never have been able to create without it being uh, the way that it is. So yeah, I hope you've all had a real good fun with enjoying this machine here. And that right there was the Buchla Modular Easel. And I hope you all enjoyed and understood the patching and like how we got to where we are today. And in case you don't know, Post on This is coming out with a new album on May 4th. So go take a listen. You will actually be able to hear this machine on that album in some way, shape, or form, especially on Voyager 6 which is a very Buchla Modular Easel specific song that I produced with that machine, as well as a whole bunch of other musical machines as well. 
and instruments. And so please help support independent artists such as myself and others out there as well. And I hope to see you all in the near future. But in the meantime, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell notification for more videos. There's a whole lot of different videos and content in this uh, channel. So if it's what you're into, awesome. And I hope to see you all in real life, hopefully. And yeah, thanks. Peace.